Let's pray. Father, we thank you for laughter and joy that you've given us. We thank you for truth in your word. And uh, we pray you pour your spirit out upon us this day. Within Yeshua, we pray. Amen. <clears throat> okay, uh, we, we've talked about hell, Gehenna, Hades, Sheol, outer darkness. But there's one other term, at least one other. Um, but I think this, this, you know, Lake of Fire, we've talked about all these different things. But the, um, uh, one last term, which is a, a term that we're just going to try to go through some scriptures real quickly on to kind of tie this whole thing up. Uh, because there's all sorts of different, like I said, what happens is that pe once, once you're taught from an early age, I simply never questioned the doctrine of hell until the Lord began to speak to me and go, stop, look. And, oh, and I was spending a lot more time in Scripture, and I, it, you know in your mind, it bothered me all the time, that this loving God just didn't fit with what this was supposed to be. And... But anyway, he eventually got it through my thick skull to begin to look, and it's, it's not there. But one last term, which is part of outer darkness, is just simply where it used the, the term darkness and for hell, and a lot of people uh, believe that. Um, now, now, how the Lord can be light, uh, and uh, they, they go, well, he's darkness, um, or, or at least the... Uh, he's he's created this this darkness for the purpose of of punishing people, and he doesn't is not there, and yet he, we we know from the Bible that he is. Anyway, uh, all of that we're going to start uh, by by uh, I want to just read a, a quick paragraph here. We are looking at darkness simply because it is the second word in the phrase outer darkness which some have equated to eternal punishment and the torture of an eternal lake of fire. There are times that it has been assumed that darkness is hell because it can be judgment, but judgment does not necessarily equal hell. Now, you need to hear that. We've talked about it before, but, but you guys need to, and again, you are going to find, if you've not already found, that in your life, what you're going to wind up with, and people are going to have questions. Um, I honestly think there's a lot of times people are asking. They may be angry about you being a Christian. They may be angry about God. They may be angry about all the religious stuff. And they'll begin to ask you questions or throw things at you. Most of the questions that I've heard through the years from people are falsehoods. I mean, it's true. They, they are angry. They, they know, wait, I'm, this is supposed to be a loving God, and yet he's going to throw me in hell, burn me forever, and torture me? That's not a loving God, and they're right. And there's not anything biblical to indicate that. Um, now, I know a whole bunch of Calvinists just turned it off, and that's fine. Please you know, have, a, have a nice life. Um, but, when, you know, we've, I've gone through that with, with it come marching up and salute and uh, stand to their attention and, and tell me all the wrong scriptures and tell me scriptures that don't prove anything that they are saying. But uh, I even had one one time where I pointed out a scripture, and as soon as I did, the, this look of, and, and they said, yeah, I thought that too. But you could tell it wasn't supposed to come out. That wasn't supposed to come out of their mouth. And they oh, caught themselves and, and left. Uh, but they had been confronted with, and God, I hope that that seed helps that person to be set free uh, from the religion that they were walking in, which is disgusting. But moving along, the... 
the thing that I, I wanted to bring up here is that God uses the reproofs of life to, to punish, whether it's to spank, to try to get us onto the narrow way, to keep us on the narrow way, to bring others. Uh, and it's his kindness when he's doing these things, when he's bringing us to the end of ourselves. And judgment does not necessarily equate to hell. We've read already this semester some things in Romans chapter 1, all sorts of stuff going on. Proverbs has a lot in there. Um, and often the reproofs of life are in this biological life where God is trying to get us to wake up to the fact that uh, we are, let me, let me say this, can you live life? Now, what word am I using for life? In this case, I'm gonna say bios. Can you live bios? Can you live from conception till the heart stops beating without God? And the answer is you can. Of course you can. Uh, billions have done it. But that's not the way BIOS was designed to be. BIOS was designed to be uh, lived hand in hand with, filled with God, and uh, communicating with Him, Him communicating with us, etc. Uh, and religion has just about thrown that out. So very few people, honestly, very few people come to a, a relationship with God. If you would turn with me to Proverbs, we're going to just read a little bit uh, talking about the, the reproofs, because this is important. Um, and again, judgment for sin, I think, is... Judgment for sin comes along as the reproofs of life. Uh, we've brought this up before. If you don't believe the Ten Commandments, go and dishonor your parents and see how things go for you. Um, uh, murder, be angry, don't forgive. You know, all of these things we're pointing at, these, these are God's standards. He has said, this is the way that you, you're supposed to live. And... They, they come with their own reproofs. These things come with their own reproofs. And so, uh, we, again, like I said, we need to understand that, yes, they do come with their... Oh, okay. Uh, do we need to turn that off? Let's unplug it for now. Yeah, so, so the sound man can be happy. He's still gonna have to cut this out. What in the world is that? Sounded like a UFO, those of you that have heard them landing. Thank you, Tyler. Um, I forgot where I was at, so that's okay. We will, we will go to Proverbs chapter 1, please. And uh, we'll just read through a number of scriptures. Start with... Proverbs 1, verse 20. Wisdom shouts in the street. She lifts her voice in the square. At the head of the noisy street, she cries out. At the entrance of the gates in the city, she utters her sayings. How long, O naive ones, will you love being simple-minded and scoffers delight themselves in scoffing and fools hate knowledge? Turn to my reproof. Hmm. Behold, I will pour out my spirit on you. Look at this. Turn to my reproof and I'll pour out my spirit. Mm -hmm. Where I was getting to a few minutes ago is that uh, God has designed life in such a way that yes, by choice, you can quote, live it outside of God, but you can live it victoriously only with him. And he has allowed that to happen. Why would you get a reproof? Why would you... Um, I don't know, police officer give you a ticket because you're doing something illegal. You're doing something wrong. It's a reproof. Uh, God allows it to, to bring you back into uh, the way that you're supposed to be walking. 
And here we see in verse 23, he says, I'm, I'm giving you a reproof now, and I'll pour my spirit out on you if you'll turn. Let's go on. I will make my words known to you because I called and you refused. I stretched out my hand and no one paid attention and you neglected all my counsel and did not want my reproof. Does this sound like the church? Um, no rules, yay, we're free. Uh, a, a total dis disregard for what the truth really is. I will also laugh at your calamity. I will mock when your dread comes. When your dread comes like a storm, your calamity comes like a whirlwind when distress and anguish come upon you. Then they will call on me, but I will not answer. They will seek me diligently, but they will not find me. Because they hated knowledge and did not choose the fear of the Lord, they would not accept my counsel. They spurned all my reproof. So they shall eat of the fruit of their own way and be satiated with their own devices. For the waywardness of the naive will kill them and the complacency of fools will destroy them. He who listens to me shall live securely and will it be at ease from the dread of evil. Now, does it say that there won't be evil around you? No, mm -hmm. evil is there, but you live at ease from the dread of it. You could kind of think of life in some ways as, as a continuum. Uh, from the earliest days, and I don't think, I don't care who it may be, because God has told us in his word that he is reaching out to all people. And we can talk about that in a little bit, but uh, whoever it is on the face of the earth, their life starts here and things begin to happen to them, even raised in uh, pagan backward societies or things like this, God is reaching out to them. And the reproofs of life come along. No, you don't do it like this. You do it like this. This is this is the way this works. Um, and if you do not turn to those reproofs, I'm afraid the things get worse and worse and worse until eventually the final judgment on you is what? You're dead. Well, everybody dies. Yes, but if you're outside of Christ, you're dead dead. Now, What's the advantage of being in Christ, of Christ being in you? The power to live life as God has designed it. Now, I want you to hear me. You need to, that, that's, that is so important. The life of Christ in you is what is, is the power that, that is there for you to live life at, as it was designed. And I believe we were designed to be that way from the beginning. With Christ in you, it doesn't mean that evil and other things are not around you. They are, but you, as it says, sleep securely. You have a power that overcomes that. We're surrounded by evil. We talked about that yesterday. We are, we're surrounded by evil. Um, and uh, the, these evil things happen to us forever. Now, let me kind of go back to something I said a minute ago. <sighs> Through the years, uh, I've heard evangelicals storming at me from the pulpit up there pounding away trying to get me to be a better evangelical. And I'm sitting there, oh wow, okay. And they will tell you, and I've, I've heard them, that uh, it is only humans that God uses to spread his, his good news. It, 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 is, it has to be people. It is people to people and God doesn't work any other way. And so therefore you, it, you spurring us on to greater evangelism. And what that person said, I just assumed it was true. Now, this is the way most people act. The guy up there in the pulpit is the guy with the, the authority, with the guy with the degree, and he knows. So, and, and so I need to listen to what he has to say. Except that that statement that God uses only people to spread the gospel is not true. It's not biblically true. 
Does he usually use people? Yes, but he could use, um, well, uh, we, we, this one is used pretty often. Re remember um, Balaam and uh, his, his good buddy, the donkey. And uh, he can use a donkey if he needs to. He can use his Holy Spirit, which he does use. He can use um, the Greek word for messenger is what? Angelos, uh, angel. Uh, no, he doesn't use angels. Um, where is the revelation? Um, I saw, is it, I don't remember. Tyler, are you looking it up? What does it say? And I saw another angel flying in mid heaven, having the eternal good news gospel to preach to those who live on the earth and to every nation and tribe and tongue and people. And he said with a loud voice, Fear God and give him glory, because the hour of his judgment has come. Worship him who made the heaven and the earth and sea and springs of water. Yeah. There's one place very specifically that it says that he uses it to bring his good news. But I need to, to say, we see other plenty of other places uh, in the Bible where that is uh, given as truth. Uh, Ms. Davis, you have anything you want to add in here? No. Okay. <laughs> had that far away look like you were really... No, I was, yeah, I don't have anything. Oh, nothing, okay. Um, either way, uh, we're going to just run through some verses in Proverbs very quickly here. Turn to Proverbs 5. And we'll start in 7. Now then, my sons, listen to me and do not depart from the words of my mouth. Keep your ways far from her. Do not know, go near the door of her house. You'll give your vigor <coughs> to others, your years to the cruel one. Strangers will be filled with your strength. Your hard-earned goods will go to the house of an alien. You groan at your final end when your flesh and your body are consumed, and you say, how, how I've hated instruction and my heart spurned reproof. I've not listened to the voice of my teachers nor inclined my ear to my instructors. I was almost in total ruin in the midst of the assembly and congregations. We see these reproofs again coming along in life. As I said, the continuum goes along until eventually the final day you're dropped into the lake of fire and that is the second death and that second death is death death i mean it, you're it's it's over and the reproofs of life are to get us to turn to get us to turn turn up my reproof turn to proverbs 10 please <clears throat> proverbs 10 verse 16 the wages of the righteous is life the income of the wicked punishment. He is on the path of life who heeds instruction, but he who ignores reproof goes astray. Uh, again, it is amazing to me how often we in our hard-headedness will ignore reproof. Uh, we will pound against that wall over and over again and do, and, and honestly, I mean, if the, the real definition of a fool is someone that keeps on doing the same thing over and over again when it doesn't work. And this is why when you look at people that are socialists, you're going, it doesn't work. But their comeback, and it will be until this earth ends, um, is that, well, that was them back then, you see, but, but they didn't have me here. Now, this is ridiculous, but that's their thoughts. Uh, you can listen to... Uh, some of these that their mouth, which is going quite often, saying these things, and they really do believe. Yes, but they did it back then. Marx was this way, Lenin was this way, you know, the USSR was this way, but we're changing it and we've gotten a lot better. And so we're doing it differently than uh, 
it has been done in the past. Okay? <clears throat> Could I, may I say something Please. on that? The fool, it says, has said in his heart, no, there is no God. One of our students years ago taught on that and said, basically, it's saying no, God, no to God. And so often our God is reproving us. A watchman he says that the circumstances, situations we're put in are God's outward working of the Holy Spirit in our life to reprove us. And of course, his inward working, convicting us. But he said that the fool of the student that taught on that said, it's basically said no to God. And when I'm foolish, I'm, I'm telling God no. And my, I'm not turning at his, it says turn to, not, I used to think it said turn at his reproof, but it's turned to it. God, what are you saying to me? It's turning my ear to listen. Okay, this just happened. What are you speaking to me in this? And that is, but if I'm going, no, I'm going about my way, just like Balaam's donkey was sit, sit there to warn Balaam to turn at God's reproof. God was reproving him, and he was the obstacle in the way to say, turn. And God is often saying, turn. And it's for to train our ear. It says, Jesus learned to listen through the things he suffered. And having been made complete, he became the author of salvation to everyone who hearkens, who listens to him. There's a completeness. God is working in our life to keep to cause us to continually be hearkening, because we're always hearkening. We're always listening. We're always meditating on something. And God wants to work that completeness in us when we're constantly turning and listening to Him. Jesus didn't have me time. I love Eric Ludy talks about that. There's nothing biblical about me time for a Christian. You know, that, oh, but that's Jesus. No, that's me, if I'm being conformed into that image. And so that's continually hearkening up under the Father, because whoever I yield my members to, to listen to, I'm an, being enslaved by. And Jesus emptied himself and became a bond slave to his Father as he continually turned. And those reproofs are to say, turn to me, listen to me, listen. I'm, I'm telling you something in this situation. I'm speaking to you. Turn, it says, uh, today if we hear his voice, don't harden my heart. You know, no, I'm just going to keep going and my heart gets hardened and I get callous and my ability to hear him speak is chain is hindered because I'm not turning to listen. And that I think it's interesting it says turn to it. You know, turn to it and it's God and it, I think the word there reproof is uh, well, there's more, but it's basically God speaking. You know, it's a it's God's a, um, argument to to not argument, but I'll have to look up the word. But anyway, there's more than just um, it's not the word correction, but I have to look it up. But anyway, it's God saying, "Listen to me, listen." You train a child to continually, if you're a good parent, which I can't say that I I have fulfilled that role. But if I, if you're a good parent, you're attentive to your child. You're not sitting back and eating your bowl of potato chips and watching TV and your child is destroying your house. You are responsible to prune that child and train them and to be aware of what they're doing. Well, that's our Heavenly Father watching us and putting things to t train us to listen. And that's His goal is that our, He would have our ear where we are being conformed into the image of the Son to listen under the reproofs of life, to listen continually, to have that completeness formed in us, that complete listening up under some, anyway. Yes, <clears throat> thank you. Thank you, Ms. Davis. Okay, uh, Proverbs 12, <clears throat> verse one. Whoever loves discipline, loves knowledge, but he who hates reproof is stupid. Let's get, mm -hmm. let's get down to get the right word out there. Come on, you're stupid. Um, the Bible is not going to go candy coat these things. Good. Proverbs 13, please. Uh, verse 18. 
13, 18, poverty and shame will come to him who neglects discipline, but he who regards reproof will be honored. Uh, Proverbs 15, please. Verse 10, grievous punishment is for him who forsakes the way. He who hates reproof will die. Uh, the same chapter, go down to verse 31. He who has ear and <clears throat> listens to the life-giving reproof will dwell among the wise. He who neglects discipline despises himself. He who listens to reproof <clears throat> acquires understanding. The fear of the Lord is the instruction for wisdom. Before honor comes humility. Uh, again, the, the reproofs are, are there in our life to, to guide us. And you, you want to think of them as, as fences, and it's really true. Um, I doubt very seriously that I'm going to be, that I am going to die in a, a skydiving accident. Okay, why? The reproofs have have narrowed it down that I'm first not going to climb in the plane. Actually, it's long before I wound up with a crippled leg that I was going to climb in that plane, and I, I'm not going to do that. You know, it, it's just there. There are things that uh, are that guide our lives into saying no. You need to be careful in whatever it may be. You don't do that. And sometimes those reproofs may be just uh, pretty simple things that <clears throat> happen in our lives. Um, I heard a man say one time that sin uh, leaves a mark on us and that mark is a, a mark of ownership of the Lord. That sin will... God will use the things that, that happen in, in life. An example of this, it's an extreme one, uh, but it can happen to any of us, is uh, Johnny Tata, I think was her last name. Eric, one. yeah, Johnny, Johnny Eric, Eric and Tata, yeah. And, uh, and she was a wild, I can do anything teenager and was doing some of that. And she jumped into the water and head first as you guys have probably all heard the story, and her, her head hit the bottom, and she couldn't move. That was it. She stopped. Um, and at, up until that time, and, and she tells the story of it, that she was in rebellion and doing whatever she wanted to, and uh, she got confronted with a pretty strong reproof. With with that though, she's become a very outspoken uh, person to help a lot of people with disabilities. And she is also an outspoken believer in the Lord Jesus Christ. And so her life has been used, but the, the reproof, I mean, you talk about uh, hitting the brake on your life. You know, one second you're alive in rebellion, and the next second you're a quadriplegic. <clears throat> and uh, it was a few years after that that uh, she was confronted that this was a mark of ownership for her. And so these these reproofs, if we're listening, and I, I, let me let me kind of give another example that the Lord keeps bringing it up over and over again because he brought it up before it came down. <clears throat> uh, <clears throat> one of the reasons that that uh, you're here to listen to Mrs. Davis and I is for us to look in, in your faces and go, okay, I know you're only 12 and 13 years old here, but... Uh, we're here to tell you that if you live long enough, you're going to become like us. And I know you're looking, going, well, being like Mrs. D, that's one thing, but like Mr. Davis, I need to 
change my life and repent. Um, but uh, this is a, a few years ago. The Lord, we we talk about here. One of the things that we talk about, you know, brought it up the other day, is that God's law is simply the way things work. Now, I don't care if it's the the moral law, the what we would call the the Ten Commandments or Torah. Uh, or, or the, the book of James, Sermon on the Mount, Luke chapter 6, all sorts of other things. These things are, are law. But there's other laws. Uh, the, the hymn goes, the, the stars in their courses, something about he, his power and forces or something along those lines. <laughs> and these are his laws. We talk about it when we talk about covenant, that <clears throat> when he created the, the, uh, the universe and did, it, did everything, and he said, light be, it's not stopped yet. Uh, his, it's, light is continuing to follow God's commandment. Light is. And uh, his, his commandments... His law of physical things are also his laws. Now, the reason I brought up about us being old uh, is that one of the things that I think Mrs. Davis and I both marvel at is how we both drop things constantly. I mean, it's just you, your hand, your 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 old hand, your old neurological system goes, "Oh, I've got that." Well. <clears throat> Yeah, at 12 years old, with that much push on it, you had it, but you don't have it anymore, <clears throat> or even at 30. But as, as you grow older and the muscle mass decreases and it's replaced by other things that are just not muscle, um, and fat doesn't hold things very well. But anyway, you, you, you don't hold things, and it, dro it drops. And I can't... I can't tell you how many times I reach for something <clears throat> or I'm moving my arm around to, to and I, I'm going to hit something else. It's just like, <laughs> if it's there, I'm going to bump into it and knock it over. And a few years ago, I was having a, a good run of these knocking things over. And, you know, I went, ah, what it was that I said at the time. And... The Lord spoke and he said, are you upset with my law of gravity? I'd never thought about it like that. I know. <laughs> it's time that you did. It's, it's his law. Dropping things. The law of gravity is going to take it. And it's so funny. These people, well, we're not under the law. Yes, you are too. You are, uh, all of God's law is the way things work. Um, if we didn't have the laws of physics and chemistry and all these different things, we wouldn't have the technology that, that surrounds us right now to live. And anyway, there's these, these reproofs can come in, in something as small as I'm dropping something, but it's still, it's a reproof of life to, uh, to bring us into walking in his way. Well, as I grow older and I'm dropping things, what do I need to do? I need to rely upon his strength more. I need, need to rely upon him. I have need. I mean, it's really, it's really true. I don't hold things the way I hit things in order. You know what? If it, if it was the Lord and he's living in me, it's not going to work out that way. He would do it. And so the, these are reproofs for me to turn to and to hold on to.